Hello friends, welcome to my channel Techno Sujata. So today we are going to learn how to improve website performance. But before that, let's check why it is important to improve the performance of website. In this digital world, we are browsing millions of websites. But if the website is taking longer time to load, then we lose the focus and possibly close the window and shift to another website. Please watch the video till end. I am assured you will learn something new about improving the website performance. There are number of factors which impact website performance and the common factors are heavy CSS and JavaScript, slow internet connection, larger image size, too many plugins and too much traffic on website. So let's take some techniques to improve website performance. First one is optimize image size. Suppose if you are having many images on website and if that website is taking too much of time to load then it is important to optimize your images. So first thing we can do is resize image size. We can achieve this using any free online tools. In market you can see we are having numerous online tools available for image editing. You can use any one of them. Second thing we can do is to choose right image format. You can remember some of the tips while choosing image format are in most of the cases try to use JPEG images because it will provide best quality for smaller size also. PNG can be also alternative for JPEG images but try to avoid usage of zip images if you are having larger images on website. Second option is proper CSS and JavaScript placement. Sometimes we place the CSS at the bottom of document but it is recommended to place inside documents header. So do remember these small things because it also helps to improve website performance. On the other hand if you place the JavaScript in the head tag it will block the loading of HTML and CSS elements. So it is recommended to place JavaScript at the bottom of document. While using JavaScript, you should always prefer async JavaScript loading. As it specified, script will be executed asynchronously as soon as it is available. You can clearly see the difference with only script tag and with async attribute. Let's jump to next technique that is minify and combine CSS, JavaScript and HTML files. So minification is a process of optimizing CSS and JavaScript files by removing the spaces or shortening symbols in source code. You can achieve this using any minification online tools. And so most of the website are using this process and combining them into a single vendors. Next one is to reduce the number of HTTP requests. To achieve this you should remove unnecessary images. CSS, JavaScript files and font files. Along with this you can resize image size, combine CSS and JavaScript files and minify the external scripts. Next one is a very important technique that is minimize time to first byte. So TTFB is the time it takes for the server to receive first byte of data from the server. So TTFB is the combination of HTTP request time plus request process time plus HTTP response time. To improve this TTFB there are some tips recommended by Google. So let's check one by one. First one is optimize server application logic to prepare pages faster. Second one is optimize how your server queries database or you can migrate to a faster database system. Third one is upgrade your server hardware to have more memory. Let's explore next technique that is use prefetch, preconnect and pre-render techniques. There are different prefetch, pre-render and pre-connect techniques. Let's explore one by one. First one is DNS prefetch. So while routing to another domain you can use this technique. DNS prefetching is the technique which tells the browser that certain domain name need to be resolved to an IP address before the browser actually see the resources from that domain. So this is the actual process of DNS prefetching. First it will load example.com then it will find the prefetch resources from that browser then it will fetches required resources to load the particular page and it will cache inside browser and then it will wait for user to click that link. 
Next is pre-connect. Pre-connect allows the browser to set up early connections before HTTP requests sent to the server. So connections like DNS lookup, TCP handshake, TLS negotiations. So we can actually speed up the loading time by 100 to 500 milliseconds by actually establishing early connections to the third party origins. Next is link prefetch. Prefetching the link is like if you assure that specific resource is required in the future, then we can ask the browser to request that item and store in browser cache. So we can reference that later. Next one is pre-render. Pre-rendering is similar to prefetching. Pre-rendering collect the entire resources to display a page that user may navigate to the next. The main difference between pre-rendering and prefetching is that inside pre-rendering the entire page is downloaded in background and if the user navigate to that page hidden page is replaced with the current tab and the requested page is displayed all these techniques are very important so you can try once and compare the before and after result of website performance next technique is reduce the number of plugins so plugins are reusable functionality usually we use in content management systems. So plugins comes up with the additional functionalities such as blog post, analytics and each plugin comes up with the additional CSS and JavaScript files. So it will increase our TTFB time which we discuss in a fifth technique. To avoid this remove additional plugins which are not critical in your website. Next one is increase speed with the CDN and caching. Full form of CDN is a content delivery network. So it is a group of web hosting servers that are distributed across the world and positioned in various geometrical locations. So what does exactly CDN does? It will host your website on multiple proxy servers that are scattered around the world rather than using original single server setup. Along with this CDN also control the cache files. It will give you the report that reveals the number of cache requests. With this, let's wrap up the session for now. I hope you have learned something new from this session and implemented it while building new website. So friends, this is the last part of HTML for beginner playlist. If you want me to cover any specific topic, please add in comment section. We'll try to cover in next videos. I hope you have learned new things from this playlist and if you like my video please click on like button, do share with your friends and families. Till then keep learning. Bye bye.